Question one. George throws a ball at a target 15 times. Each time George throws the ball, the probability of the ball hitting the target is 0.48. The random variable x represents the number of times George hits the target in 15 throws. So part A, find the probability that x is equal to 3, and I, I, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5. The first thing to note is that within this experiment, or this activity, George is throwing a ball and either hitting the target or missing the target. So there are two outcomes and a fixed number of trials. So we are looking at a binomial distribution. So we say x is distributed binomially. He has 15 throws at the target and 0.48 is the probability that he hits. Now, when we're looking for the probability that x is equal to 3, so this precise number of hits on the target, we use our binomial calculation. So we have 15 choose 3 times 0.48 to the power 3 times 1 minus 0.48, 0.52 to the power 15 minus 3, which is to the power 12. On our calculator, this is equal to 0 0.01966 and so on, which is 0 0.0197 to three significant figures. We can also find this value directly on our calculator if we go to our menu 7 statistics and look at binomial PD, which is number 4. Again, we can type in a variable. Then the x we want is equal to 3. n is 15 throws and the probability of hitting is 0.48 and if we hit equals there we get our 0 0.019668 which rounds to 0 0.0197 to three significant figures for part ii i want the probability that x is greater than or equal to five now unless i own the graphical calculator I cannot find this value on my calculator. So I have to rearrange this. If I want the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5, it is the same as 1 minus the probability that he hits it less than or equal to 4 times. This less than or equal to 4 I can find on my calculator. So I want to find the probability of x being less than 4 and I binomial cumulative distribution. So if I go to my menu and I can see the normal distribution curve here, so if I push 7 for statistics, I want binomial cumulative distribution. So if I push down, it's option number 1. I want to enter my variables. Now I want to find the probability less than 4. So my x value is 4. n is the number of trials. In this case there are 15. And P, for me, I'm looking at the probability of the target being hit, which is 0 0.48. So 0 0.48. And hit equals. And this gives me my cumulative distribution, this 0 0.07986. Now, what I'm actually interested in is 1 minus this. Now, your calculator will temporarily have this stored as the answer. So if you go menu 1, back to your normal calculator, and I do 1 minus answer and hit equals, I get the value that I require. And so as seen on our calculator, we can find the exact value of this 1 minus 0 0.079 and so on. And we get an answer of 0 0.920 to three significant figures. Part B use a normal approximation to calculate the probability that he will hit the target more than 110 times. He's now throwing it at the target 250 times. Now, if this was distributed binomially, he would have 250 throws and the probability of hitting is 0.48. Now we use this binomial distribution to calculate our normal distribution approximation. So with the normal approximation, I'm going to use the letter Y because this is a different set here. 
for the normal distribution, you have NP, so 250 times 0.48. This is the mean. And then you have MP times 1 minus P. So that is 250 times 0 0.48 times 0 0.52. And this is the variance within the normal distribution. So we can put those values of NP in and we get a normal approximation of 120 and 62.4. So just to remember, when we are looking at a normal distribution, these numbers represent the mean and the variance of the distribution. The next thing to note in making the approximation to a normal from a binomial is that within a binomial distribution, we are looking at fixed outcomes. So for example, he hits it five times, he hits it six times. He doesn't hit it 5.5 times. However, the normal distribution is continuous. And so when we want to find the probability that he will hit the target more than 110 times, we need to look at it being greater than 110.5. And this is because the normal distribution, unlike the binomial, is continuous. Let's look at a quick sketch to see why this is the case. If I want that he hits it strictly more than 110 times, we know on a binomial distribution, that is that he hits it 111 times or more. So on my normal distribution curve here, I have my mean of 120. It is 111 or more hits, which I require. But now, due to the normal distribution being continuous, in order to include this 111th value, I need to take the lower bound of 110.5 and it is that value of which I want the area greater than in order to find the probability of more than 110 hits. We can type this onto our calculator. So now I want to find the probability of my y distribution being greater than 110.5 in a normal distribution. So again, if I go to menu seven for statistics, I want the normal cumulative distribution, which is number two. My lower bound is my 110.5. My upper bound is infinity. So we're just going to enter a large number here. My standard deviation, remember, is the square root of variance. So in this case, it is the square root of that 62 Point four, and then my mean is 120. And if we hit equals, we get our p-value of 0 0.8854, and so on. And we get our answer of 0 0.8854, and so on, which is 0 0.8852, three significant figures.